Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be creating this voxel water simulation. It's actually pretty simple. I'm gonna break it down step by step. We're gonna start off with the simulation, then go into the lighting, the shading, camera setup, and all that good stuff. And as you can see, the example is right here on the right-hand side. Um, super exciting, and you're gonna get some really cool results depending on the types of settings we play around with here. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so guys, we are in our default document right here. I just went ahead and saved this beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the light to start off with. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn our cube into a physics simulation. So go ahead and click on your cube, go to object, go to quick effects, and then quick liquid. I just realized you guys can't see that, apologies. All right, so quick effects, quick liquid. As you guys can see, if you press play here, we do have a fluid simulation already. So now the goal here is to set up a cache folder and then convert this to mesh. So I'm gonna head over to my domain settings on the right hand side here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to this setting called cache. I'm just gonna to go to my desktop and make an entirely new folder, call it tutorial cache, head into that folder and then click accept. And then you're gonna to wanna to change this little setting here that says replay to all. And then for the frames, I'm just gonna do 100 frames for now. And then go ahead and check mark mesh right there. And then let's click on bake all. Now it's gonna go ahead and rebake the simulation for us. All right, let's go ahead and play this back. And as you guys can see, we now have a fluid simulation converted to mesh very quickly here in Blender. So it's nice that we have these built-in tools. Now you guys can render this out to any frame amount you want. For now, I'm just gonna stick to 100 and I'm gonna kinda continue setting up the scene here. Um, actually, let's just do 250. I'll just do 250 real quick. And I'm gonna bake that again. It's gonna bake all the way out to frame 250. Now my resolution right now is about, I think 32 by default. Yeah, let's see here. 32 by default, the resolution divisions. You guys can go ahead and change that to whatever you'd like. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and snap to the camera. I'm gonna go to my solid view so I can kind of see what's going on, just play this back. Um, and now I'm gonna start kind of setting up my scene here. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my dimensions to 1080 by 1920. I'm gonna click on my camera, change that to an orthographic perspective and just zoom out here a bit so we can see our scene. I'm going to add in a floor plane and I'm gonna bring it down below our fluid simulation. And I'm gonna scale it up so that it's all the way around our whole scene here. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop over to Cycles GPU. And I'm gonna give our world a kind of white color here. And then I'm gonna give our ground plane a kind of blacker surface here, like a dark surface like that. Go ahead and click on your liquid and just give that like a nice kind of blue tint for now and we'll come back to this. Go ahead and hide that main cube that was acting as our fluid object. And now here's when we're gonna turn everything into a voxel simulation. So we have our fluid simulation, it's looking fantastic, but we're not getting that pixely effect that we want. So how do we do that? It's actually quite simple. We're gonna head over to our modifiers tab, click on add modifier, and then go ahead and click on the remesh modifier. Now there's gonna be different options under here. There is a voxel option, but I'm actually gonna choose blocks. And now, as you guys can see, when I choose blocks, it's now gonna take that entire fluid mesh and remesh it into a blocky format. So if I go ahead and press play here now, you can see we have this awesome pixelated look, which is totally customizable. Now what's really nice about this is right now we are on a depth of two or four, and if we bump this up to maybe five or six, you can see that as I zoom in here, we still kind of retain this fluid look, but it's so much more blocky. Now it's gonna be a lot easier to see in solid view, so I'm gonna play it back in that. As you guys can see, we have our fluid simulation, right? I'm gonna go ahead and play it back from the beginning. And it looks so cool. And now you can go here and all you have to do is change your modifier and you're gonna get completely different results, right? All right, let's go ahead and snap back to the camera. We pretty much have everything set up. It's just a matter of adding some cool lighting and textures to this thing. So as you guys probably saw in my original um, tutorial, this looked like more of a rough glass shader. So I'm gonna start by just kind of raising the roughness here a little bit. That is already starting to look awesome. And then what we're gonna do is just add a simple gradient texture to our fluid simulation. So I'm gonna head over to the shading tab here, snap back to my camera, go to rendered view, zoom out so we can see our nodes here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a color ramp, add in a mapping node, add in a texture coordinate. And I'm just gonna plug everything in like this, the generated to the vector vector to our FAC and then the color is going to plug right into the glass. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this volume absorption. I don't want that. Um, I just I just don't. You guys can add keep it if you want. I just don't think it's really adding much. 
Um, and then in our color ramp here, I'm just gonna choose a bright kind of blue color. And then for the other one, I'll do like a green. So as you can see, we already have this nice gradient. I'm gonna actually make this a little bit different, like a green blue. That looks good. And I'm gonna bring these colors really close together so that we can easily see where that gradient splits. Now, you guys can plug in different parts of this coordinate system right here. You can plug in the object to the vector and you're gonna get different results. Um, and then you can kind of adjust this rotation here. So I believe if I remember correctly, I had this at 45 and negative 45 here. I think with my generated plugged in or was it my normal? It was one of these two. Uh, hold on a second guys, sorry. It was this one. Yeah, so as you can see, we can now adjust the location here and then you guys can adjust the rotation as needed. This is really up to you how you want to do this. I just thought this looked really cool. And then you can also adjust the scale as well. It just kind of gives it this nice gradient look. And then of course you can, you can adjust these color stoppers as needed as well. That looks kind of cool. It's just kind of fun to mess around with these coordinates and see the different results that you can get. I think I kind of like this one here. That looks pretty much perfect. So you guys can copy those settings. All right, I think that looks great. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and work on the floor. So for the floor shader, I'm going to add in a brick texture. And I'm just going to plug that right into the base color. And I'm going to turn the offset to zero. And I'm going to make my colors like this. I'm going to do like a dark gray for the first two colors. And then I'm going to do like kind of a lighter color like that. Um, so that's going to be our mortar right here. I'm going to do 0 0.001, I think. How about 0 0.006? There we go. And then for the width and the height, you're gonna to wanna to make those the same. I'll just do 0.3 and then you can scale accordingly. I think that looks pretty good. I'm also gonna make this a slightly metallic surface with a lower roughness. That looks pretty good. Now, you guys probably saw before, I kind of had this pixelated landscape look. So how do we actually achieve that in Blender? So with my plane selected, I'm just gonna head over to solid view so this is easier to see. Tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide. You're gonna get this little menu on the bottom left here. And you're just going to put, for the number of cuts, we'll just do 30. That looks good. Tab out of edit mode. Go over to our modifiers. Add a displacement modifier. Uh, click on new. And then you're going to head over down here to our texture properties. And we're going to select clouds or maybe something different. I think clouds looks fine. So as you can see, we have this crazy displacement, right? I'm also going to add a remesh modifier. And I'm going to click on blocks. Now you can see we kind of have this blocky look. Now I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this one more time. And as you can see, we can actually adjust. <laughs> We're gonna wanna un uncheck, remove, disconnected. There we go. You're gonna actually be able to adjust different values here. So as you can see, when I adjust my depth, we have this crazy pixelated landscape look, right? Now this is way too intense, so I'm gonna lower my strength here. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead to render view and just see what that looks like. This looks awesome. So I'm gonna head back over to my shading tab. I am going to up this scale here, which is gonna give us a better grid look. And then I'm gonna actually just add in an image or just a regular plane, scale it up, bring it below this one, right about there looks good. And I'm just gonna give it the exact same shader. Control L is to copy that shader. And as you guys can see, I now have this really cool like landscape look that I think I'm gonna actually scale up a bit, okay? Now, the goal here, guys, is that you don't want your landscape to interact too much with your liquid simulation. Now, it's not actually going to affect the simulation but we don't want it to interfere so much where it, it looks bad. So like visually, um, like right now it looks pretty bad. So I'm gonna move this around. I think that's a good spot right there. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. That's pretty much perfect. Now if I hop back into my layout tab, I snap to my camera, everything is looking fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and narrow in on my camera. I'm just gonna go to the camera settings, viewport display. I'm gonna up this value called pass part out. And that kind of just narrows us in in our scene here. And then I'm gonna enable some depth of field here. So I'm gonna collapse that, click on depth of field. And as you can see, we already have this really cool depth of field look and I haven't even targeted this yet. Um, but actually the default settings look pretty good. You guys can go ahead and adjust this f-stop to whatever you want. A value of five looks pretty good. Now, if we go ahead and play this back, let's just see what this looks like so far. It looks pretty cool. Now, again, guys, you can go and you can rebake re the simulation with whatever value you want, but you do want to make sure that our simulation isn't getting cut off by the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our floor. 
bring it down just a bit so that it's barely meeting the bottom here. And as you guys can see, this looks really, really cool. Um, there's probably like one more thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a light source. I'm gonna add in a light, an area light. I'm just gonna bring that up, scale it up, and I'm gonna make the power 3000. All right, now we really have some good lighting on this scene. I'm just gonna bring this all the way up above our camera here. This looks fantastic. And you guys can adjust the lighting as needed, but I actually think this looks really, really good so far. The only other thing I would probably wanna do is go over to my domain, go ahead and click on free all. And then for the resolution, I'm gonna do 50. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and click on bake all again. As you can see at the bottom, that little timeline marker is scrubbing across. And it's actually gonna rebake our simulation at a higher resolution. So before it was 32, now it's gonna be, uh, what did I say, 50. So just go ahead and give that a quick second. And as soon as that's done, you're gonna see the difference and the result that we're gonna get. It's gonna be a higher quality fluid simulation and our voxels or our pixelated look should look even cooler now. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and play it back. And as you guys can see, we're getting a little bit more detail here. And if you guys wanted even more detail, remember, all you have to do is go to your remesh modifier and just up that count. And now you have still have a pixelated look with an even higher count. So you're the basically every time you up that value, that octree depth value, it's actually gonna just create smaller boxes, smaller cubes for the simulation. And then if we go forward here, you can see it's still looking awesome. Now you see it's glitching at the bottom a little bit. Be careful with where you put your floor. I actually noticed after I rendered mine that I was getting a little bit of flickering. I'm just gonna lower the floor a little bit. You can see that how it affects everything right there. Should not be flickering as much now. And it has to do with where it's clipping into the floor because you're just gonna get these weird shadows and these weird lights. Um, this is looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna set up some render settings and we should be good to render. I'm just gonna go to like frame 30 or so, kind of see how that looks. Looks pretty good. I think I'm actually going to go to my area light and make this 5,000. I just want it to be a little bit brighter. And I think I'm gonna to go to my color management settings and just raise the exposure just a little bit. I just think it looks just a little bit nicer. Awesome. And again, guys, you can adjust your environment however you like. I just wanted to show you how to make this pixel effect. Now for my max samples, I think I'll do 150. Denoising, we can do optics. Um, I'm gonna keep the dimensions as they are. Light paths, I typically make these all five or 10. You don't really have to make volume five, but it, it doesn't matter that my computer is fast enough for it. Uh, five, one, two, three, four, five, 25 for the total. You can click on fast GI approximation, but look what happens to our glass. Completely ruins the glass. So I would suggest not doing that. It will render faster, but it won't look as good. All right, let's go ahead and render one frame and just see what we're getting here. <clears throat> All right, we are getting, it looks like it's gonna be sub 20 seconds, which is fantastic. Yeah, we're getting a, actually a pretty good time here. Now you can get this down even more if you guys go ahead and check out my quick render settings. Um, it doesn't look bad. It, it, I might do a, couple, a few more samples. Now for this particular example, I've already rendered this for my Instagram Reel, so I'm probably not gonna actually fully render this animation, but this project file will be included if you guys support me on Patreon. I have an entire Google Drive full of all of my tutorial files. So you guys can actually go ahead, bake this out. The entire scene is set up for you. This is looking fantastic. And these are just a lot of fun to mess with and watch. Now, if we if we wanted to, we could even pull down this value even more. As you can see, it's still gonna work. So watch, watch this, this is a really low value. This is a low value of four. As you guys can see, we're still getting this really cool effect. Um, you can actually see the particles right here. I don't know why they're overlaid, they shouldn't be, but how cool is that guys? Still a little fluid simulation. You can see it's a little bit glitchy with lower values, but still you just get that really cool effect. And if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and convert one of these frames to mesh and you just have this really cool looking kind of object, this abstract object made of these square pixels, these cubed pixels. So I just thought this effect was really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I can't wait to see what you come up with with this effect. This should work with other simulations as well. I'll have to test it out. Fluid, it works the best with. Um, and the best part about this is you don't have to bake your fluid at an extremely high um, resolution. You can actually get away with those lower resolutions because at the end of the day, you're trying to get this pixelated look. So you really don't need it to be realistic because the whole point is that we want it to be abstract. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have a great day. Consider subscribing. Check me out on Discord, Instagram, 
TikTok, of course, YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, turn those notifications on, and I hope you guys have a great day. I will talk to you in the next tutorial.